surfing on the Gulf, we're lucky. I guess it is like California because the sun sets into the water. And I've been out on a few sessions where the sun is setting and it's just like the most gorgeous thing in the world. And also the two, like on, if you go out early in the morning, sunrise is really beautiful. Coming over the island from the east and you're out there surfing, it's unbelievable. It illuminates the water, all different colors. And it's, it's really a gift. I, I don't understand what I would do if I didn't live by the water. I'd go nuts. Well, Gulf doesn't have the greatest surf in the world, of course, everybody knows, but growing up out there was really cool because it's kind of like a little oasis in the desert. Like the only waves on the Gulf Coast really come in on Anna Maria, and it's just like a little shire. In the summertime, when there's waves from tropical storms or hurricanes, uh, the wave is more of like a slab and it's heavy, and they say that if you can surf White Ave on a hurricane break, it's the hardest wave to surf in the world, and if you could surf that, you can surf any wave. All you have to do is get over the size factor. A lot of my friends always went to Cloud Break when I got a little older, and just places in Indo and all over the world, Hawaii, and they really, all of them came back and said the same thing. They said, if you can surf White Ave on a hurricane break, it's so heavy and quick and hollow that and it's such a difficult wave to catch. But if you can catch that wave, you can surf that wave, you can surf any wave in the world, you just have to get over the size. Started surfing in about in six, early '63, and then in '64 decided to open the store. Just a, my friend, myself, and my uh, eventual partner Jim Durati, we just decided to open the store and take a chance. It was just one of those things, no thought behind it. I moved here from Texas with my dad. He was an electronics guy. He moved to had a job in Sarasota. I ended up here in Manatee County. Came out to the beach, met some lifeguards. They had a surfboard. There were about two or three of those guys. That was about the only surfboard around. They let me try it and let my partner, my eventual partner, try it too. And we really got into it and so that's how we started. You know, there is a lot of good surf here, you know, so you got some of the worst and some of the best. And if you can learn to surf here, you can go anywhere and surf. Kids from around here are hungry for good waves, so they travel and they, when they go to California and stuff, they go out in any kind of conditions and stuff. The guys in California prefer glassy waves and, you know, when the kids from around here go out there and surf, they think they're crazy. But they're just hungry. They just go out there to get as many waves as they can. What happened in the surf industry went from surfboards into wetsuits into clothing and the women's stuff. And sooner or later, you got to either get serious work in the surf or, you know, it's hard to. The days of putting a sign on the door and saying, come down if you want something to get me out of the water are over. You got to be here. When the people are here, you have to be here. Gulf Coast is so small. People get really good at, like, technical stuff. A lot of my friends got really good at, you know, like, popping a bunch of moves and starting airs at a young age because they're small waves and they're easy easy trip waves. We scurf a lot, surf behind the boat, um, we wake skate and paddle board and I mean that's pretty much all the board sports you can do when it's flat. Way too much beer. Maybe that's something the big difference between surfers here and surfers on the east coast. We probably drink way more beer than they do because we're so bored.
once you see that, once you live with that, once you're raised with it, I suppose too, is like you can never be away from it. You're crazy if you can be.